Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meets, and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at uh, the Shadow Catcher shader in Cinema 4D. Now, this shader is only in uh, it's only come about in Cinema 4D R18 and upwards. So if you're using a version before that, you're going to be out of luck. But um, I suppose we should just jump straight in. Okay, so I've got a scene here. I've got a sphere object here in the middle and I've set up a light as well which you can see here and I've got this background object and I just use that background object so I could um, uh, set up where my ground plane is and uh, you know put my sphere in there now this tutorial is not really about that so we're more con we're concentrating on the shader really so let's just hide the background for now so this is what I'm going to be essentially rendering out so uh, if I go to my render settings, you can see we're in the standard renderer and um, we've got a path to save out to and all I've done is change it to PNG uh, or any format that supports an alpha channel and turn on alpha channel and if we just render this out we get something that looks like this now I've got the um, background image I had a minute ago open in Photoshop so here we are now if I drag that image that I just rendered out onto our scene, we can see that our ball's in our scene, but it doesn't look very realistic or grounded because it's not got a shadow. Now, this is where the problem with uh, Cinema 4D has been in the past, where if we wanted to catch that shadow, we'd have to use some compositing and object buffers and all kinds of other things. And where... Whereas in other 3D programs, it's been easier because they've uh, 3DS Max is a good example. They've just had a shader that captures the shadows on an alpha. So this is exactly what the Shadow Catcher plugin does. So obviously we're going to need something to catch the shadow on. So if I create a uh, floor object, so now we've got a floor in our scene. And as you can see, we've got the shadow there. But if I rendered out like this, it's no good because it renders the floor and excuse me if we uh, put that in we've now got our floor in our scene so we just want the space where the shadow actually exists so let's delete that out and go back to cinema 4d and we can take a look at our shadow catcher so if we go down to create in the um, material menu go to create shader and then go down to shadow catcher this new material is created. So let's open this up. Now it's pretty much already set up for us. We've got cat shadows checked and then you've got the shadow strength so you can um, determine whether it's more transparent or not. And then we've got this shadow color. Um, so we'll have a look at those in a minute, but let's just um, put our shadow catcher material on our floor and render out. Uh, we'll overwrite our last one. So there we go. It doesn't look any different, but if we go to, uh, let's get rid of this one, remove that image. Okay, so our first render without the shadow catcher, if we go over to layer, we can see that we've got the background and we've got this alpha. And to view it, we'll go to single pass and then click down to our alpha. So you can see there that, you know, it's just the ball that's been isolated. But if we go back to our history and go down to the next one, you'll see that the shadow is now being included in the alpha. So that's what we've just rendered out. So let's go back to Photoshop and drag our ball back in. And there you go. We've got a shadow now that's now in the scene and it's, you know, cut out from everything else. So that's exactly what the shadow catcher does. But as you can see in our scene, the shadow looks a little bit dark. Uh, it doesn't really match with this little kid's uh, shadow there. And you can't see any of the... Um, tiles or anything underneath it so let's have a look at how we can remedy that let's uh, delete this back out go back to cinema 4d and go back into our shadow catcher now this uh, shadow strength here if we knock this down to say 50 percent and then render out again okay you can see that compared to the shadow before this is really white and this one's kind of darker so let's, uh, let's go back to Photoshop and drag our image back in. And now you can see that we can see the tiles underneath. Uh, I think that's a little bit too much. 
So again, let's delete this out. Go back to Cinema 4D. And uh, our shadow strength, let's knock it up to, well, it was 100 initially, wasn't it? Let's knock it down to 85% and see what kind of result we get in then. Render it out. Go back to Photoshop. Drag it in. So again, it's a lot darker. So it, it's, um, it's a bit of a balancing act, really. But also the colour as well. Uh, at the moment in cinema, it's, um, it's uh, this black here. So if we actually open this up, um, most shadows, especially from sunlight, are going to be in the blue range somewhere. So I'm just going to do that and just knock this up here and see what kind of result we get from that. So let's, uh, let's render out the scene again. And uh, go back to Photoshop and drag this in. So now you can see it's more of a blue hue there. I still think it needs to be darker, but um, yeah, we're not doing too bad. But you can see how, you know, using these settings that we can actually get to a result that we we kind of want. So, um, excuse me, cancel that. I say, come on. So let's bring this back just a little bit and we'll make this darker. Let's call it 90%. Let's see if that helps. Okay, back to Photoshop, get rid of our old one. We're getting there, but yeah, as you can see, that is what the shadow catcher does. It catches the shadows. It allows us to bring it in with transparency. Um, there's also another setting in here, which is called the uh, Include Lighting. So if you have a look at the help for this, it basically means that this is what it will look like with it's off. But if you've got multiple lights in your scene, those lights will contribute to whether that shadows alpha, it will affect the shadows alpha, basically. So I found this actually helps. Let's put our strength back up to 100 and include lighting. So I've found that it actually helps with the transparency as well. So let's go back to Photoshop, delete this out, wipe that back in. And uh, yeah, it looks quite, quite natural there. But that's essentially what the shadow catcher does. Okay, so that's all very well and good. Um, now let's have a look at our render settings because I've seen a couple of people have this problem. Um, so if you go over to our render settings, uh, we've got it set to standard renderer. Okay, so um, as I just did a minute ago, you can see that it's rendering out with the with the shadow fine there. But if we flip over to the physical renderer um, and render, let's have a look what happens. Uh oh, there doesn't seem to be any shadow there. Uh, it's not in the alpha at all. And just to make sure, we'll drag that into our scene. Oh dear, we've got a little bit of a problem. Now, initially I was worried. I thought, well, if this doesn't work for the physical renderer, which is what I predominantly use in Cinema 4D, oh shit, because, you know, that's, that's no good. Um, and I did some digging, and it's not the physical renderer that's a problem. It's the type of shadow on the light. So if you have a look at my directional light in the scene, you can see shadow maps. Uh, it's set, my shadows are set to shadow maps, and in the physical renderer, that's a no-go. But if I change our light to um, our light shadows to ray traced or area, so let's flip it to area, and then render out. Yay, we're back in business. We've got area lights, and um, you know we're all good to go. So again, let's go back to Photoshop, dump our new render in, and we're back. So we've got, we've actually got area lights, uh, support for area lights, sorry, and uh, and our ray trace lights. So if that's why you're not getting any shadows in physical rend renderer, that will be the reason. It's because of the shadow type on your light. Okay, let's move on. I've, uh, I've got another scene set up. And... Um, because the shadow catcher not only captures shadows, but it can capture reflections as well. So again, I've just got a background um, with this image on it. And um, that's there so I could set up my scene 
make sure that it, this tabletop matches. So if I turn this plane here off, that's my tabletop. And you can see that I've got it matching with the um, photograph behind it, the, the background object. And uh, I've lined it all up. So I'm going to turn the background off because we don't need that now that we're all set. And um, if I just render, this is, uh, this is the result we're getting. Which is fine. Let's, uh, in fact, I'll render to the picture viewer. So you can see kind of what result we're getting and I'll, uh, I'll, uh, pop back over to the background. So this is what we're getting. And if we go to Photoshop, I've got the other photo open. And if we drag that in, ooh, wrong one, drag that in, you can see this is what we're getting. Now, obviously we don't want this plane to be shown. So let's pop back over to Cinema 4D. Close the picture viewer. So this plane, um, we don't want that. We're just going to use it to capture the reflections in our scene. So again, if we go to Create Shader and then go down to the Shadow Catcher and then open it up, uh, by default, we've got this set to cast shadows, uh, catch shadows even. So we can turn that off. And down here we've got catch reflections, so I'll turn that on. I'm not going to mess with anything here for the time being. I'm just going to drag it onto our plane, and uh, I'm going to render out. Yeah, so I want to overwrite it. So as you can see, the reflections are there. And if we look at our alpha channel, we go over to layer and look at the alpha. You can see we've got the alpha of the reflection there. So if you pop back over to Photoshop and drag our reflection in. You can see we've got a nice result where we've got our object and its reflection on an alpha channel and this reflection's actually got transparency so we can see through it and see what's uh, underneath the table as well. So let's go over a few of the settings in it quick. Uh, if we open up the shadow catcher material or the reflection catcher in this uh, case, we've got the reflection strength so it's set to 50% at the moment and this is the result we're getting. So let's uh, crank this up to 100% and um, render again. So take note of what this looks like here. And when we crank out the second one, we can see we've got a full reflection there, um, denoted by the alpha strength. Again, in the render settings, no matter if you're using physical or your standard, in, in the uh, save menu, we need to have the alpha channel checked on just like the shadow caster. And we need to be saving out in a uh, format that supports um, an alpha channel. So that'll be PNG, PSD, that kind of thing. Okay. So now we've got it rendered out again. Let's, uh, let's get rid of this one and then bung this one in. And as you can see, that is a much, much stronger reflection there. Okay, so let's go back to Cinema 4D, open up our material again. Uh, I think by default, this is 50%, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, so we've also got this reflection mask here. So the point of this is so you could actually um, put a, uh, a different shader in to mimic the material that it's on so um, like a Fresnel shader so obviously glass has got a, a Fresnel value so if we drop this down and add a Fresnel we can go into the Fresnel and click on physical and we can say okay let's go glass okay so now we've got a glass Fresnel on this so let's render out remember we dropped our uh, strength down to 50% and we've got a Fresnel for glass on there. So if you go back to our picture view and dump this back on, you can see now the reflection is much, much weaker, which is probably something we don't want in this case, because if you look at the um, the books in the background here, you can see their reflection. They're quite vivid. So we probably going to need to do some tweaking in our shader. So first of all, we've got this Fresnel and we've got our strength. Let's crank the strength up and leave the Fresnel as it is and see what we get. So we re-render re out. And again, it looks a little bit stronger than it was before. But this will let us know. Let's crank it in. Better, but it's not as good as the books here in the background. So what we could actually do, if we go back to cinema, go into the Fresnel, we can actually give this a custom value. So let's uh, 
let's give this a custom value of five, which is really quite high. And our strength is set to 100%. So I think it might be a bit blown out this, but let's give it a go. Okay, that's stronger. That is stronger. Go back. Drag it back in. Now that's a bit more like it. This matches a lot more closely We've got what we've got in the background here. So that pretty much wraps it up, guys. That is how you capture shadows with the, um, with the shadow catcher shader and capture reflections. Uh, again, it's only from uh, Cinema 4D version R18 and upwards that this shader is available. Um, so bear that in mind. And uh, I hope that cleared up any um, problems people were having with uh, not being able to cap capture shadows in the physical renderer. Okay, as always, uh, don't forget to check out the website, digitalmeet.uk. Um, there you can sign up to be a Digital Meet member for free. And uh, then you'll be able to comment on the website and um, vote on the upcoming tutorials. There's a poll on the tutorial page. Um, also, don't forget to check me out on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Google+. There'll be links for those in the description. And also, if you want to keep Digital Meet up and running, if you'd like to help, uh, there'll be a link for my Patreon page in the outro of this video. Cheers for listening, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.